I'd like to acknowledge my fellow speakers this morning, uh, Will and Celia, who each brings their own perspective on the cause that brings us all here today. This is not the first time that Celia and I have shared a platform in recent weeks, and it's fair to say that on other occasions we haven't always uh, been in agreement. But there's something we do agree on, and that's the importance of the fair trade ideal. And our delight that Wellington has been able to take a leadership role in flying the fair trade banner in New Zealand. I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly acknowledge all the great work Celia has done on this score. The council vote which led to Wellington gaining fair trade status was a unanimous one. It does us good at times like this to remind ourselves that there are issues which transcend politics. That unanimity reflected the will of the city to follow this path. It has a community, it was a community effort which got us here, a wave of enthusiasm for the ideal of giving everyone a fair go. It's a great Kiwi ideal. The concept of getting a fair reward for honest toil is at the heart of New Zealand society. Groucho Marx said, the secret of our life is honesty and fair dealing. Then he added, if you can fake that, you've got it made. Now, we, ca we can all agree with the first half of the comment, at least, when we consider the businesses, employers, schools, churches, community groups, and other organisations that embraced fair trade and made it possible for Wellington to become the first fair trade capital. It's a matter of getting people to think about what they buy and encouraging them to pick the fair trade option and of increasing the number of places where they can make that choice. I'm very glad that the City Council is also able to play its part in the process. A great deal of work went into attaining the right to the fair trade name. We had to meet certain criteria, we had to set up the community steering group and use and promote fair trade products throughout our organisation. And Wellington at large did its bit, with more than 100 businesses serving and selling fair trade products by the end of November last year. A city the size of Wellington only needed 40 to qualify and we got to 100 by November. We haven't been resting on our laurels. Everywhere in council that serves coffee now serves fair trade coffee. We're working with our contractors to do the same with such things as tea and coffee. The steering group is still actively working to bring together all interested parties and promote the fair trade ideal. And it's worth noting that Wellingtonians are New Zealand's biggest consumers of fair trade bananas. We've also shown the way for others. I'm delighted to note, and, and um, Steve, you went through some of this detail, that BNZ and IAG, two national organisations with around 7,000 employees between them, have achieved fair trade status. Auckland isn't content with just being the super city. It's campaigning to be a super fair trade city. I see Boston also has become a fair trade city, though I'm probably... Um, we can't take credit for that. <laughs> we could try. <laughs> I'm sure when Will speaks in a few minutes, we will be able to give, um, he will be able to give us a more global perspective. But as Mayor of the Southern, Hemisphere, uh, Southern Hemisphere's one and only fair trade capital, I'd like to thank the Fair Trade Association for bringing this conference to Wellington. Thanks to everybody for the work that they've done and continue to do to keep fair trade in the forefront of all of our minds. And thanks to all the businesses, organisations and individuals who've made the choice to fair trade and made the change to fair trade. Thank you all for coming today. Please enjoy today's event, which I'm sure will be instructive and enjoyable, not to mention tasty. And enjoy, uh, continue enjoying all the excellent products available in fair trade Wellington. Thank you very much. <laughs>